Oh, yes, 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 yes. Christmas came early for your boy this year. What is going on, people? LP2000, right back at you with another X Plus figure review. And today I'm doing the X Plus Gigantic Series Godzilla 2000 Rick Boy Edition. As you can see, I got the figure here, and you know how we do things around here. So let's get into the box before we get into the awesome figure. Let me get him out of the way here. Hopefully, I won't stab myself. <laughs> All right. You know how this goes, you know, uh, typical, not typical, but just like um, my other Gigantic Series G2000 fig review, um, please check that out, by, by the way. Um, it's basically just a virtually the same box, except it has the sticker here, it's going to find it as a red board with the orange fans on the back or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it with the box, with the awesome artwork here. Um, the Yuji Sakai Model Collection, Godzilla 1999 or Godzilla 2000 Millennium, Japanese language title of the film. Godzilla, his face in the background and the picture of the overall figure here. Now, mind you, since this is the red board, this actually is the standard on the cover. Um, but like I said, this signifies the red board. But uh, it may be confusing a little bit. So if you do happen to try to get one or want to get one, Make sure that if you have this sticker, that this figure has the orange fans. Otherwise, you know, um, you're not getting what you really paid for. So that's much, pretty much it with the box. So let's get it out the way and get into the figure. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Um, and let me just preface this by saying this, ladies and gentlemen. This review is dedicated to two special people. First, my wife, because she actually got this for me. This is like an early Christmas gift for me. So thank you, Sandra. I love you very much. Thank you so much. And for Jamie Davis out there in Japan, um, he runs uh, a Facebook group known as Toy Explosion, Japanese um, Figure Services. Um, he um, runs that site, uh, or that group, I should say. Uh, out there, uh, he's for, he, he's in Japan right now, and he can help you um, get you know Japanese figures for a good price. It's on the Japanese market instead of going through here in the states through eBay that may um, charge a little bit more than what you may get over there. Um, he does charge uh, charge a little bit of a fee just for his services, whatever. But it's still cool. It's still great. It's a wonderful service that he that, that he that he's providing, and and this was my first purchase from him and. It will not be the last. So thank you, Jamie Davis, for helping me get this figure, as well as my wife, Sandra. Thank you so much. Um, 
But like I mentioned earlier, I already did a review of this um, of this figure, uh, the standard version with the purple fins. So I won't go into a lot of detail about it, whatever. Just check out that review and you'll get more of my details. Um, but yeah, virtually this is basically the same figure, except that the ripboard item comes with the translucent orange fin signifying what Godzilla's about uses atomic breath, breath when his back lights up. Um, but that's basically the only difference between the two. Um, I wanted to get this figure because my wife got the, um, standard, as you've seen before. So, and I know y'all heard me many times saying before the, uh, Gigant 2000 was released that, um, I wasn't really feeling it. And, but once I got the standard in my possession, or at least in front of me, um, in person, whatever, I immediately, immediately changed my mind. X Plus immediately changed my mind just in just that, that quick instant. So, now I thought about it, you know, since we already have a Gigantic 2000 here, um, my wife and I try to diversify, if that makes any sense, our collections, because hers is downstairs and mine is upstairs. And uh, to bring diversity to our collections, we try to like buy figures that are like maybe the same, but still a bit different. So it wouldn't make much sense, at least for me, to like buy another G2000 when we got one downstairs. So that's why I wanted to get the Rip Boy. Um, so that's why I have the Rip Boy here. And um, as a matter of fact, let's go into um, comparisons. Let's go to comparisons between the Rip Boy and the Standard. Let's go. Okay, folks, here we go. Side by side. For the first time, you have the gigantic G2000 Standard here with the purple fins. And the Rick Boy with the orange fins. And as you can see between the two figures, they look exactly identical except for the uh, dorsal plates. The, the skin texture on both figures are identical. The teeth sculpted real well on both. Um, absolutely, absolutely identical, excuse me. The eyes are done really well too on the Rick Boy, just as the uh, standard. Um, the pose is the same. Um, like I said, the, the green texture of the skin, the rugged texture of the skin, but it's still detailed really well. The claws, the feet, um, the musculature of the um, body, as well as the legs and everything like that, they're basically the same, except just the um, the dorsal plates are, um, are different. Um, the curvatures of the tails are identical. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it with the difference between the two. And you know what? Out of two... You know, I have them both here, and as you can see, um, they both look awesome in their own right. And, you know, because on the Xbox Collectors Facebook group or in various Kaiju Collecting Facebook group, we have a thing where, you know, between these two figures, because folks were really trying to, were up in the air about what to get as far as the, um, about what to get when it came down to these two, either the standard or the rip board. So we had this little thing called Team Purple, for the standard or team orange for the Rick boy. And um, I chose to go team orange, but that doesn't mean that I'm hating on team purple. I think they both look great. I, I think they both look awesome. I think they both look amazing. Um, so basically if you are on team purple and you think that's the best, I can't argue with you. Or if you're on team orange like me, you think that's the best. I can't argue with that. They're both so awesome. They're both so amazing. And they're so similar, but they're so um, strikingly different with the dorsal plates that a case can be made that one is the best over the other one. But just look at them right now. I can't pick one over the other one. So a case can be made for both being the best. So and there, I'm, I'm sure some of there are folks out there who think that this is the best gigantic series figure out there. So, um, but yeah, this is great. Absolutely, absolutely great. Yeah, I, I'm so happy to finally have this, and I was so wrong about it about it initially, but I'm glad I was able to um, score one for my wife, um, witness its excellence and exuberance firsthand, and that changed my mind in a flash. So I'm glad that we got both standard and Rick Boy. But like I said, they're basically the same figure, except the dorsal plates are different. So that's pretty much it. So yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, babe. I really do appreciate it. And thank you, Jamie Davis. So um let's do a little a couple size comparisons. Uh, excuse me, a couple size comparisons with other gigantic series figures. And I'm gonna try and get them all together at one time. So bear with me. Alright, let's go. 
Okay, here we go. Here we go with the first size comparison. I think it's apropos that I chose this one. Um, the Gigantic Burning Godzilla. And I chose it so we can see a little bit difference in the um, the color scheme as far as Godzilla's orange patches on his dorsal plates, on his abdomen or his legs here, as well as the orange um, color scheme on the Gigantic G2000 Rip Boy's dorsal plates. And as you can see, um, they're made some basically of the same material, um, the translucent vinyl, you know, with the orange, or whatever. Basically, if you were to put a light to it, it would actually look like it's radiating light from within. And I think this also applies to the burning areas of the burning Godzilla too. But the thing about the burning Godzilla is insulated from within. So even if you did put a light inside, it wouldn't penetrate it because it's covered by thick vinyl within the figure. But there are times if you're able to put like a light up against like right here and have it shine bright upwards, it would create this um, look of the orange areas radiating like it was in the film. So um, that's why I wanted to just show you this little comparison between the two. Um, yes, th th this is a sterling example why a little gigantic series, the size, the paint scheme, especially with the burning Godzilla. Um, so yeah, this is really, 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 really cool. Really, 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 really cool. So, so I'm gonna try up here to try and get them all together at one time so we can see how they all look together. Both gigantic um, G2000 Rip Boys as well as my Burning Godzilla and my gigantic GMK. So hold on one second. Okay, people, I done it. I don't think I can hold them for long on this table. <laughs> Wow, here we go. The entire Gigantic series, uh, both G2000 as well as the GMK and the Burning Godzilla. And uh, yeah, this is this is an awesome shot right here. Sorry for the shaky cam. I'm trying to do this as, as smoothly as possible so you can try and see them all in one take here. I know this table's about to, about to kill over, so. But yes, the, the Gigantic series. You know what? This is why I love the Gigantic series so much. This is why my, when it comes to X Plus Collectibles, this is like my figure line of choice. You know what I'm saying? Which I, I will actually talk about in a few seconds once I get everything together here. So, uh, yes. But seeing all these together is absolutely so awesome. So awesome. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Woo. This is why we're kaiju addicts. That's why we're kaiju fans. This right here. This is why we do what we do. This is why we love what we love. That's why we're passionate about what we're passionate about. All this right here. Wow. Very, very thankful to have these in my collection. And you know, it's just it's just awesome. It really is awesome. Finally see all these together. So yeah. All right, so let's just wrap things up with my final thoughts and we will we'll conclude this review. All right, and thanks thanks for y'all for hanging in there with me. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, just like my first time seeing all these together, so I'm kind of like flabbergasted. I'm really speechless, that's why I'm, I'm kind of rambling here. I'm so sorry, but I'm just excited. I'm so happy to have these together, so um, just bear with me, but um. Yeah, let's just wrap this um, review up with my final thoughts. All right, let's go. Okay, folks, my final thoughts. Basically, what I said in the original Gigantic G2000 Gigi Sakai um, X Plus figure review, I highly recommend it. Get it. Whether it's the Rip Boy or the Standard, you can't go wrong with it. It's absolutely stunning figure. One of the best figures of the year 2015, in my opinion. You can't go wrong, so I would... I highly recommend do what you have to do to get it. Um, and I'll touch on more on that towards the very, very end. Uh, but first, let me just say once again, thank you, Sandra. I really do appreciate it. I love you so much for this early Christmas gift. Thank you so much. And thank you, Jamie Davis. And I want to just, I want to sing the praises of this cool cat. He's a really, really cool guy. Um, he shipped it out to me real, real fast. Um, he packaged it well. Even gave me some Japanese candy, which I thoroughly appreciate. And it's just that type of service that really makes me want to just, um, it makes me um, happy that, uh, to do business with somebody like that or whatever. Um, like I said, go to his um, Facebook group. 
It's Toy Explosion, Japanese toy and figure services. Maybe shoot him a message. And um, he's good at also at um at getting like um when it comes to Rip Boys, um S Plus figure um um Rip Boys. Um, you can um, pre-order your Rip Boys through him. Kind of sometimes getting Rip Boys is kind of like a hassle. Sometimes lets you know certain people or whatever. Um, but he's a real really cool guy. Um, very approachable. Um, he he, he can communicates with you very very well um if something ha was, was to come up he's very he's very good at letting you know beforehand or whatever um so he just asked that if, you know you're going to do pre-orders for his rip boys through him um you gotta have the money up front um that way you know he can pay for it or whatever and then once the rip boys release he'll ship it out to you um but just shoot, shoot my message on facebook jamie davis tour explosion and um, I'm sure you would enjoy the, enjoy the experience. And as far as like being a collector, as far as being a Rip Boy collector or standard, standard collector, just basically collect um, what you like. Um, me personally, I have a mixture of both Rip Boys and standards. I got more standards than Rip Boys because for one, I didn't want to go through the hassle of going through the Rip Boy site. But now, thanks to Jamie Davis, I know I'm going to start um, getting more Rip Boys. Cause there, there are, are a couple of Rip Boys that I wish I could have gotten, but I didn't get a chance to do so. Like the gigantic Burner Godzilla, I would have loved to have that um, Oxygen Destroyer base that came with that. Or the 25 centimeter King Seesaw that had the um, per er, perked up eyes and the little Okinawa King Seesaw mini statue. I wish I could have got that. But um, but now, thanks to Jamie Davis, um, we, we now get a, another opportunity to um, get our hands on, on more Rip Boys without going through the house of going through the Japanese um, sites. Or if you don't want to go with them, um, Jamie, which I highly recommend that you do, um, just look on eBay. Sometimes some sellers out there do sell uh, Rip Boy items, but you have to look just as soon as the figures come out. And they may charge just a little bit more than what it, it normally goes for, but for what I've seen online, especially through eBay and through certain eBay sellers or vendors that actually do the right thing, um, they don't charge that much over it, maybe just a little bit, um, but they're um, affordable. And it's not like how you will see if you wait like a month after they come out and, and how horrendous they go up in price. Um, so either that route or, like I said, Toy Explosion on Facebook, Jamie Davis. You will not be disappointed, okay? Now, my last thing, what is next for the Gigantic Series? What is next? I'm going to reference... Um, a post that Ka um, that Kaiju Addicts curator um, or the owner of the website Kaiju Addicts, John Stanowski from FossilGifts.com. Yeah, I'm gonna plug everything in this um, in this review. Uh, but yes, John Stanowski um, on Kaiju Addicts. He recently did an interview with um, Guy Akamoto. He's a guy that runs X Plus, or he he's a guy that selects what monsters are gonna be coming out or whatever. And he had a whole bunch of um, 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 questions to ask him on the future of X Plus, what's gonna be coming out, what can we expect or whatever. And it's a lengthy interview. I highly suggest you go on kajuedits.com and check it out. It's really, really good, very, very formative. The answers that Mr. Akimoto really um, say um, in a way they're kind of vague, but then again, he does offer some kind of insight of what, what we may be in store in the future, which leads me into the Gigantic series. Mr. Stanowski asked him what, his, what are his ideas of the next Gigantic series, which is why I got these figures here. And his response was he wants to make either a Godzilla 1989 in Gigantic Series, a Godzilla 62, or a Godzilla 54. And mind you, we probably can take that as a grain of salt. I mean, it's not something definitive at this point. But also at the same time, think about this. When Kaiju Cast did their interview with Guy a couple of months, a couple of years ago, when the first Gigantic Series GMK figure came out, in the interview, he did say that he wanted to make he or he said that he wants the next gigantic series Godzilla to be the Burning Godzilla, and what happened after that? We got that as the next gigantic series figure. So maybe one of these will be the next gigantic series figure. Like I said, it's not definitive, but at least give us a little insight about it, about what we may be in store for. And I have to say this: as far as the '89, I think all of them are great selections. To be honest with you. But as far as the 89, I think that if it came down to it, I'll probably have that as my least favorite to have as the next gigantic series figure. Because we got a 30 centimeter gigantic, we got a 30 centimeter Godzilla 1989 from X Plus, a 25 centimeter that came out with the reissue of the Balante set this past, I mean this year, 
And uh, we also got the Yuji Sakai 89. So that's too many 89s all in one period, really be honest with you. So I'm thinking from a business perspective, from an X plus business business, business perspective, that 89 may not, it, I'm sure we're going to many sales for those who love the 89, but maybe not for the good majority. So in my opinion, you have to bring out something that will appease the majority. Of course, you can't please everybody, but at the end of the day, a business is designed to make as much money as you can, even if you're going to lose a little bit on whatever you invest in to put a product out there. So I think, and this is my opinion, that the 89, although it's impressive to see it in a gigantic series form, I think that it'd be better to go with either the 54 or the 62. Now, the Godzilla purist in me, the Godzilla purist in me, actually, you know what, I, I say that last. The selfish side of me wants to see a Godzilla 62 as a gigantic series figure. I love the 62. King Kong vs. Godzilla, one, one, one of my most favorite films of all time, as, as arguably probably the most popular Godzilla film out there ever. I'm sure we're going to many sales um, for the guy, Godzilla 62. He, he's a powerful pose. Uh, he, he has a powerful pose. He may be a little bit fat in certain areas, but if they they did a wonderful job with this Godzilla 62 30 centimeter. This is the Rip Boy. Also, the, when, also the Godzilla 62 down rear issue, they did a wonderful job on that. So to see this in a gigantic series form, whether it's stylized or suit accurate, I want a more suit accurate like the gigantic Burning Godzilla for the 62. Um, but that's my personal selfish favorite. If I had it my way, I want a gigantic 62. But the Godzilla purist in me, the fan to my core, I would like to see, or I would love to see also a, a 54. I can't choose between the two. That's why I'm, I'm letting you know both sides of, of my psyche here. So the selfish side, or what I really want, a 62. But the purist in me, well, I think the right thing to do would be the 54. I think that's a, um, a figure that everybody should have in their collection. Whether you're a fan of the movie or the suit design or not, I think the 54 should be at least represented in everybody's collection. And I think a gigantic Godzilla 54 would be the way to go. Um, you know, especially to garner, you know, more sales or, or whatever. And um, and with the new Godzilla film coming out next year, you know, um, the, the newest Japanese one, the, the first one in like, what, 11 years or 12 years? Um, I think it will be apropos, but like I said, this is what started all, the classic, you know, without this, we couldn't have got all this and all this, everything, everything that, that we have come to know and love about this genre started with this guy right here. So I think that gigantic, gigantic series, Godzilla 54, will be an awesome way to go. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just, um, it just, it just, I'm just excited about the possibilities of one of these three being the next gigantic series figure. So, um, yeah, this box may come down, so whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are my thoughts. Thank you, Jonathan Stanowski, for letting me reference your wonderful interview with um, Mr. Akimoto. Um, like I said, go to his website, kaijuaddicts.com. But not only that wonderful interview, but everything involving X Plus, past, future, present figures, you will not be disappointed going to that website. So, yeah, but that basically concludes my review of the gigantic series, Gaza 2000, Yuji Sakai, Rip Boy Edition. Courtesy of X Plus. If you have any questions, holler me down in the comment section or hit me up on Facebook, Ben Mark Callow, where we go from there. Check out the Facebook groups I'm about to mention Toho Kaja Union, the X Plus Collectors Facebook group, the Godzilla Collectors Facebook group, Sci Fi Labyrinth, and of course, Toy Explosion, Japanese toy and figure services, headed by my, my good friend now, Jamie Davis. Thank you so much, Jan. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, Sandra. I love you. Thank you. I appreciate you so much for getting me this. And I thank y'all for watching. And I really do appreciate it all. And I will see y'all again on this figure and move review. All right? Y'all take it easy. Okay, folks, I'm back with my final thoughts. Love the figure. Absolutely.